Come by our booth and we'll show you a little bit more about our product and how we specifically try to solve some of these problems. But let's talk about the problems in general, kind of make sure we're kind of all on the same, same platform. So obviously in warehouse management, why warehouse management? Well, three real simple things with warehouse management, right? Stuff shows up, stuff moving around, and stuff leaks. I mean, we can just simplify it. And I've been doing this for 27 years, and I've heard 23 pages of what all happens in our inventory that you could sum down to. My problem is stuff is showing up, and then the stuff gets moved around, and then the stuff leaves, and I don't know where it is. So we're going to talk about that. And obviously, stuff shows up because somebody placed a purchase order. Somebody transfers it from one site to another. We're low on it here in company A or site A. We're not low on it in B. I need to know, hey, we got undistributed stock here. I want to move it from B over to A. Then we've got, of course, RMAs coming back to the customers. And then one of the things we'll also talk about company production and working process. We've got stuff flooding in our inventory internally. And then products move around, bin to bin transfers, company side. I won't read through each one of those. These are all things that you know about. Of course, what we're big on here at the System ID Show is trapping this information in all of these standard types of things with barcode scanning, either mobily or barcode guns attached to devices, tablets, what have you. So when we talk about that, when the phone rings, I want to know. Anybody ever had this problem? Do I have it? Do I need to get some more? Do I already have some coming? All standard type of problems that we have in inventory control. Now, work in process. Why work in process tracking? We start building something. It moves around the manufacturing facility, right? And then as it moves to the manufacturing facility, somebody starts processing it. So stuff can show up at a work center area, right, and sit there. That doesn't mean that we're incurring job cost time. That doesn't mean the machine has started. That means it's moved to that work center talk a little bit more about that. And then of course we actually start working on it. Let's say I'm, I'm in scraping, the stuff shows up in my work center, right? And it sits over here and maybe I've got two or three jobs that are moving through that. And then I actually take that job, maybe I've got a traveler with it, right? And I scan and I'm getting ready to start actually scraping it. I scrape for a while, maybe it's time to go to lunch. I scan out again and now I've locked that actual process time. So we're basically doing two things with working process, right? How's it moving through the building? How long has it been there? Where is it at? And then how much time actually went into it? These are all things we try to do also with barcode gun technology, right? The guy can take the job order, scan it underneath there, or he can take a mobile gun, pick who he is, what he's working on, set the gun down, hand it off to somebody else. But we want to track in a perfect environment. We want to track not just the time I spent on it, but how long it set in my area. And then of course eventually work orders get completed. We stamp a lot on it, a production order number, it's something we're going to track by, we release it to stock and the production either continues, maybe we release 10,000, we're doing a $100,000 order, a uh, quantity order, we're going to release 10,000, move it on to stock and continue that production order in another lot movement as we move in. So obviously we're talking about getting down to the phone rings again and in a manufacturing and working process environment, I'm talking about this. Where is it? I gotta set the phone down. Sally wants to know what's going on with her job. And in a traditional environment, I'm headed out to the manufacturing floor and I'm walking all over the floor. Hey, have you, is it, did you scrape this thing yet? Have you seen this thing you scraped yet? Oh, it's gone to cutting. And then I go over to cutting. Have you cut this thing yet? Have you, when did it, when did you, where, did you move it? What, what, it went back to scraping? Why did it go back? When did it go back to scraping? How long did he actually, was he not scraping it long? Why is it moving back and forth from cutting to scraping? So I need to know how long has it been there? Where is it at? How long has it been there? And then of course the actual cost I've got in labor and machine time when they're actually processing it at that work center. And these are all things that we're always keen and focused on helping manufacturers and warehouse management systems track and, uh, and track. So talking about those things, the obvious problem in inventory, how do we solve these problems in inventory? How do we know if we have it, if we need more, and do we have any coming? Well, it's the obvious. We've got to set some minimums, right? We're going to set minimums by typically by site location. So I have, may have multiple company sites and multiple inventory sites. But my minimums are not going to be on that item. 
my minimums are going to be at that size, specific to that size. And my standard package should be specific to that size, okay? I may have a warehouse where a standard package of a pallet of 144 is where I want to be. I may have another subside over here, maybe a retail location or maybe just a smaller location. Maybe it's a consignment location where my standard package might be, hey, we need to keep about 12 to 20 of those, not 144, and we want to meet the minimums on that side to 12 to 20, not to 144. So we focus on making sure that our minimums and our standard packages are set by side. Now, how are those minimums getting set? A couple of different ways, right? The old-fashioned way. Somebody's reviewing this. How many are we building? How many are we moving? How many is going out the door over a time period? And then I sat down item by item the old-fashioned way and said, you know, I had that set at 100. I'm running out of stock. I'm hitting into this. I need to pick that up. Or we look at factors. All right, what's moving out the door between this date and this date? Between this date going back maybe a 12-month period, what is our average lead time to get this produced if we're manufacturing it? Or what is our average lead time to get this back from the vendor if we're buying it? So lead time, whether we're building it or buying it, is going to be critical to what we're also sending. And we want to refactor those minimums based upon that information that we're tracking. And in a perfect world, and of course we're leading up to talk about the flow perfect world, in a perfect world, all that data, every time that trigger is pulled on that gun, every time that wand is swiped over the job traveler or over a pick ticket, we are date, time, and stamping it. Your system is date, time, and stamping that, and user stamping that, saying as of this day, two went there, this date, and this time, so that you can go back and reproduce and get this kind of information. And obviously, we control the, the, the on hands by lot. And then I think bin location is a lot of things that's really important in the warehouse management system. And again, I, that's why we kind of titled this the obvious. It's kind of the obvious things you think about in the warehouse management. But where is this stuff in bins? Just because I've got 500 in the warehouse, that doesn't mean that I can walk straight to 500. I may have 200 over here, and I may have overstock of 300 back over here and what have you. So again, we want a gun, we want a mobile gun in a perfect world, right? We hand that to the forklift driver. He chooses what he needs to be buying, what he needs to be picking, right? It should be listed there by the priority that's been assigned by management, and then he should tell him where to drive. What's the guy doing circling around in, in here, driving up and down aisles? We've got forklifts meeting in aisles like this. We should be directing those things based upon those bin locations that we set in the warehouse. And then, like I talked about, monitoring the men's and the usage and the lead, lead time to constantly be resetting these minimums and standard packages by site. So not anything new, no earth-shattering information that you probably haven't heard before, but something that always needs to be considered in the warehouse management. Work in process. What can we do to assist in work in process? Well, again, going back to what I said was the same old problem in all work in process. Where is it at? How long has it been there? Where is it at? How long has it been there? Well, we want to trap date and time and user stamps with those trigger pulls. We want to arm either PCs and wands or guns or mobile guns out in all of these work centers that we're moving through so that when that merchandise comes through that, that area, or when that forklift delivers that merchandise to the scraping area or the painting area, it is scanned and checked in and out. So instantly, enterprise-wide, anybody with a PC or a laptop or an iPad or a cell phone can say, where is Sally's job? There it is. I could be standing in Sally's office and she says, hey, before you leave and go back to the office, What's going on on that job that, that I called? What's happening on that sales order that we, we, we called in there? I, I thought we had an ETA date kind of set. Take my cell phone, check that thing out. Well, uh, looks like it's in scraping if it's something we're manufacturing, or it looks like they pulled half of it and back ordered half of it. You just haven't seen it yet, but in a moment you'll get an email saying that half of this has been pulled. These are all types of things we try to push people towards at flow software. And the way we're able to push people for it, warning, commercial about to commence. Okay? Now we're going to talk about what you need. We do, we solve those problems I mentioned browser-based. We think that's the answer. We don't think that's where it's going to be. We think that's where it's at. Okay? 
Okay, we think browser-based is the solution to solve these problems. And when we talk about browser-based, we're talking about all the browsers. I'm not talking about a browser based on a specific model of a specific kind of computer. You've got to buy a Dell 1780 with 2 gig of RAM on it and Windows blah, 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 blah. I'm talking about if you've got a browser on it, it works. Okay? If you've got a cell phone that gets on the internet, it works. you got a tablet, I don't care if it's an iPad. iPad's great. What if it's the HP? By the way, they're not selling this anymore. I'm sorry. It could be a HP or a Samsung. You get on the internet, you can check all the data that I'm talking about checking right now. So the flow software starts off, the framework and the platform is the most important thing that we push and talk about to our customers. We think that's important that you start off in a browser-based product. Now, what's happening with the mobile guns? Well, what we do because we're browser-based is we run a browser on those mobile guns. And what that does for you is system ID represents all the brands you'd ever want to choose from. We can, when we're working with you in system ID, we can say, you go pick the gun, you don't need to be talking to flow software. Well, what if we choose the Motorola or we choose the Honeywell? It's none of our business what you choose. You choose a gun that's got Windows Mobile 6 on it, and we got us a mobile gun, we're ready to go. You got a phone that's got a browser, and we got a phone that's ready to go. It doesn't work too good for standing. But we got a phone that we can check and go back and look at the data that's being captured. Now, I've got this mobile gun. I've got a little browser on this, and I'm walking around, or jobs are coming through my manufacturing, and I pick it up and I deliver it over here to scrape it, let's say, the manufacturing diner, and I shoot that gun. It's done. I don't shoot that gun for two or three hours, and then I get a little nervous, and I walk back up to some point somewhere in the break room or back in the supervisor's office and set it on a cradle so that everybody can understand what's happening over the last two or three hours. I pull that trigger, and I don't care if they're in the building or they're in a hotel in Atlanta, and they decide they want to know what's going on in manufacturing. They get on the browser. It's instant with each trigger pull. The date, time, and stamp is just the same as if I sat here on my computer and typed in the date and time and hit the enter key. The real-time scanning on the browser, this is not batch. Do we do batch? Absolutely. But boy, if we can nudge you towards a real-time, if there's any chance that you can provide a cellular service or a Wi-Fi service of any kind, we want to put a browser on whatever that device is and turn you loose with real-time scanning so that the enterprise, the enterprise might be two other people, might be Bob and Jane back here in the back office, but we want everybody in management to know what's happening out on the floor. Yes, real-time data scanning and updating. Another thing that we do with Flow is we do open standards. We're big believers that open standards is not coming. It's here, folks. You need to be on a platform that you can buy any device and not have to look over your shoulder with the software company having their hand out. Yeah, I need, uh, yeah, you got to call me and I got to send you this thing. I'm going to email you this thing. You've got to enter this activation. You've got to type in this last. Thing. You just got to have a browser. You just got to have a browser. It simplifies everything. When that gun breaks, you're not calling Flow Software. Oh, look, well, we have to get another gun from System ID because, you know, what do we got to get from you? You don't need to call us at all. You call System ID. Now, here's the great thing about System ID, too. They just take a gun and fire it off to you. They don't have to take a gun and spend 20 or 30 minutes calling Flow Tech. Okay, we got to get this thing set up and ready to go because they've got a gun down. They pick up a gun that's got Windows Mobile on it, and it's out the door. Nice and easy. We're big believers in that. We run even on Windows and Linux now. Because we're browser-based, some people will host an application inside the building. They have no interest in it being out available to the world or out on the web. And they've already got a little server in place. They're ready to go. We can run it browser-based inside the building. Or go out to the web host of your choice. But when you start looking at web hosting, you're going to run across this as a problem. What are we going to host it in, Linux or Windows or Linux? Doesn't matter if you're on Flow Software Platform. Choose the one you get the best rate on. Choose the one you get the best speed on. We run in both. And then without getting too technical, what is the data going to be stored in? That's another classic, right? Well, what, well I'm, you know, we've got this accounting system, and we're real happy with it, but it doesn't do this tracking out on the floor. It doesn't do our picking and receiving or loading tracking. But you know we got this accounting system. I sure hope that you can talk to that accounting system. Chances are in the 90 percentile, your accounting system is already in one of those. We talk all of those, okay? We don't even have to sell you 
this one and this one is free. Or if you've already got an accounting system, let's say Great Plains or SAP or something like this, that's in Oracle or Microsoft, we can literally just put it right on what you've already got. We'll just set it side by side on that same computer. You've got a database that's your accounting system, and you've got the flow that's tracking those gunfuls side by side. Now what that does, what, without you know getting at all the technical things, is it makes integration not a technical issue anymore. Those days are gone. Integration is a cooperation issue now. It means that if you want us to pull data simultaneously, I'm not talking about you import at night, somebody stays up there at 9 o'clock every night, gets a button to import, so they come back to flow at 9 o'clock the next morning and bring it in. We're talking real time simultaneously. As I pull that trigger, we can pull information from that accounting system and display it on the same screen that we're pulling information from our tracking data. Side by side, the user has no clue. He thinks the accounting company developed the barcode app. You don't need to be worried about that. So, okay, you got your customers inside the accounting system and all their addresses and everything, and when they're picking orders, you want to tell that guy picking these, picking it for Sally Supply in Fort Worth, Texas. Well, all we do is query that system you've already got in. We don't make you retype Sally Supply in Fort Worth, Texas. He pulls the trigger. We got an account code. We fetch it and bring back and put it on the screen at the same time that we're trapping that he shot that, that data. So this is something that you don't like to get into in a seminar or a, a setup like this, but it's so important from a management standpoint that we've got something that's forward thinking that we're on a platform that's good to go. So talking about flow and just ending up on that, we've got about 10 more minutes. Flow is unique because you are unique. Now probably the best thing about us is not our 27 years age experience, it's not that I'm one of the best looking sales reps obviously doing this place, but I think that can be readily assigned. It is that we customize, tweak, change, modify. I don't know how many other ways to say that. I, I'm from Texas, so I can't think of any other words to put on that, okay? We change, we tweak. We, that means that there is no perfect software. We, not even what we sell. Can you imagine if you heard that from a software guy? We don't sell perfect software because perfect software fits you. Perfect software is not something I take off the shelf and mail it to you and say, hey, look, it's gonna work. Just change what you're doing and it'll work perfect, okay? We customize and tweak them because we expect you to say, I don't like that, that's a stupid question. I don't know who told you to put that in there, get it off of there. But I do like to know the color of the guy's eyes. I like to charge an extra 20% on Tuesday if he's got blue eyes. I want that in there. What's it going to take to get that in there? So we spend our life every day quoting by the hour, okay, let me get that again, by the hour, not these massive huge, okay, that's going to take six months to do. We're quoting by the hour, customized tweaks and changes to our software. I mentioned that we integrate with other software. Why we can? Because we're in the standard SQL databases, the database of your choice, not our choice. And we've been providing these solutions for over 27 years. Now, in the last few minutes, I want to cover a couple of little case studies. How does this integration, this customization work? Here's a customer of ours that we've got working with System ID on this account. Sitco Alaska, Silver Bay Seafoods. Got a super expensive accounting system from a company called Parity. Love it to death. It's on SQL Server. They've got a super expensive manufacturing, trapping, bagging, slicing, dice, and fish system. They love it to death. But their problem is the government comes in and says, you're loading 10 conveyor belts into 10 vans 24-7. If there's a problem with that fish, we need to know what batch of fish went in what van on what day. Because we got to get on the phone and find and get these people on the call back. Well, the problem is the manufacturing system said, we don't really do the standard thing. Look, we're bagging it, slicing, dicing, it, we're putting a barcode on it, but we don't jack with the, how you're going to get this in a truck and all that. The accounting system says, we don't do barcoding, you know, we, we do accounts receivable, accounts payable, you know. Look, we, we don't want to mess with that. So they come to us, we develop a system for them, as you can read here. They're taking guns bought from system ID and they're scanning. We got a problem. We're scanning a label that means absolutely nothing to me. It's some random serial number. So with every trigger pull times 10, every five seconds, 24 seven, when they pull that trigger, we trap that serial number, we jump out here to the manufacturing system and it tells us that that is a 50 pound bag of salmon. We bring that back and we store the weight and we store the product and that they just loaded the bag and they're scanning all day long, bang, 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 bang. 
And before they start scanning, somebody walks up to a monitor and they type in band 162. And then they start pulling the triggers. That band gets loaded, somebody goes to the monitor, says so that band's loaded, and we print a packing slip that looks like it came out of the counting system because I've got the model, I've got the description, I've got the weight, and we print the packing slip, it looks nice and neat, and then we fire that packing slip data off to their accounting system and they bill. It looks like we're either part of the manufacturing company or part of the accounting company. The users have no difference. It's all seamless, all happening every five seconds times ten. Now what happens? Two months goes by, we got a problem. We got a problem with serial number one, two, three, four. Guy just opened it up, man, it's nasty. It's nasty bad stuff. Where did that come from? They come into Flow Browser anywhere in the world. They can make it available to their customer if it makes their customer feel better. They can log into that. They can type in that number. It comes up on our system in a nice little grin and says, yeah, that was loaded on van 162 this day and time. And by the way, here's all the other serial numbers that were loaded on that van. We need to snatch that up. These folks will load four to 600 bags into a van. Another case study, independent service company in Missouri got a problem. They make billboard posters big billboard posters. They got a couple of gorillas in the room that are called large customers. And those large customers say, we've got to be able to know what's happening on our orders. You want to stay in the proof vendor? You want, to, you want our business? We don't want to have to pick up the phone and call you all the time. They got a problem. They got a complete internally developed accounting system. It's all doing great, doing their sales orders. They do no tracking out in their manufacturing as a those uh, jobs move from side to side. We put in some mobile barcode guns. We start trapping it as it moves from artwork to paper cutting to whatever. We do it browser-based. We push the data of the customer's name automatically every five minutes up to a website out of their existing system so we don't jack with that system. We don't want that responsibility. We query it. We read only. We push that up to our website every time they pull the trigger. We push that up to a website and the customer portal is coming to this website that doesn't have any accounting data. It's completely separate. Worldwide, a customer now can log in and know instantaneously where that is in the system. And to boot, when they ship it, they do everything in FedEx. They throw all these boxes against the wall and they walk over there. The same mobile barcode guns the system ID sold them. They scan the tracking number on every one of those boxes. We track that tracking number, we jump out to FedEx or UPS or DHL or USPS simultaneously, it takes about a quarter of a second, and we bring back all the tracking information and store that inside a flow. So we know the weight, we know the zone, we know the address, we know everything about it by a single trigger pull simultaneously. So now on the customer portal, not only do they know where their job is, but from now and going back forever as they continue moving forward, they can bring up their sales orders and drill down immediately and know where, where it's at without calling and say, hey, I don't think I ever got this, or when did I get this, or who signed for that? All built into the system, all because we're browser-based and the integration. And then lastly, before we end up here, another simple case study. We think we don't do some odd things. Cotton, moat, leftover cotton that the mill's done with, this garbage comes to one of our customers in Wilson, Texas, and you think, well, who cares? It's garbage. It's cotton that we're throwing away, but they give it to these guys, and they deliver them in big trucks. They unload them. They take them through their manufacturing process and make something out of it, or they cut a deal and ship it out of country or out of state to somebody else that wants to deal with the cotton leftover mode. Government comes in. can do that. We got to track where that cotton came from. I got to know what mill sent you that cotton, and then I got to know if that cotton went through your manufacturing or went out the door, and if it went out the door, where it went through. Well, it's cotton. Any barcodes on it or anything like that. And it's big bales. These are pallets, okay? Steel cages. So we put a system together for them, a nice, simple system. They unload the cotton, they set it on well on the scales. They type in the total weight of the whole load, we average it among them, print out weatherproof barcode labels, nice big fat ones, they attach it to the bales, and then as that moves through that organization with mobile guns, they scan it. So they get it to shipping, they scan it. Okay, it's gone. They type in on the gun, it went to Bob in Iowa. Or it moves to the manufacturing facility, I'm now getting ready to chop this thing in a jillion pieces. They scan it again, and it's gone. Now, the government comes in, got to know what's been happening around here. They got a nice little data grid, like a little spreadsheet.
you see in Excel that says from today, all the modules and their weight that came in from all the different suppliers, and then also what went to manufacturing, the date and time, and what went out the door into shipping date. So you can see that we can start off and do all of this warehouse management. We can start off and do all this manufacturing, production order creation, and tracking. Or we can just come in back door and say, look, Stacy, I just got this, I got this project. Okay, this is, look, I don't want to, maybe phase three, phase 33, we're going to attack this. But phase one, this is the low hanging fruit I need to do. That's what we do best. That's what we do best is take our browser-based product and modify and customize it to fit our customers' needs. Now, anything we can ask, uh, answer for you, any demos, we can show you some of these case studies on our website back at our booth. When you get a moment, you're welcome to come by. We're over by Intermec. And we'll show some of this to you on the screen. Of course, we do all the graphics and uh, all the eye candy that you would, would expect to have in a browser. We do triggered emails going in and out. And all of that is handled nice and neat inside of the application. And we start with the framework. So our framework is going to be developed or enhanced or tweaked around this. And like I said, we, all these projects started from existing packages. We don't, just, we don't have to start from thin air because we've been at this 27 years. We're tweaking and modifying to give these people what they need, so it's a very fast process. And with that, I'll thank you again for coming by and hearing about it. I hope I haven't jumbled your brain up out here. You had bill bottles rattling around, so I think we did okay. You guys have a great day, and thank you for attending.